Hi guys, it's Keith Arkenberg Farms. It is the second week of July, 2020, and it has been just plain hot and brutal and humid out here. And I haven't had much time to put together some videos recently. So today I'm gonna take you around and kind of show you what we've been look, working on. And also all this good stuff going on here in the greenhouse. So let me take you on a tour, show you what we've been doing. since I'm over here in the high tunnel got to check out what I got going on behind me here look at all that beautiful fruit setting those are all my cherries they're coming in great I pruned them up from the bottom all the way up tying them up and I'm getting very close to actually get to the point where I'm gonna start leaning and lowering them some back over here we're getting very very close we're almost up to the reels right now. I mean, look at some of these fruit sets. Now, on the other hand, over here with my cucumbers, as you can see, I got bacterial wilt in here. And they're all pretty much dying. So, over some more cucumber seeds. I'm going to plant more and replace them after these die out. And hopefully the cucumber beetles will go away after that. They do, they do, they don't, they don't. But I mean, basically, I've even stopped managing them. I'm just letting them go because they're dying anyways and it's not worth the time. Now, I've also been harvesting a bunch of onions out. Got my first rack here curing. I've also got more over in the uh, caterpillar shed and a bunch of garlic. Take you over there and show you. Now, here's my curing rack. Built this a couple weeks ago. Got my onions curing. My yellows and reds, I still gotta pull a bunch more yellows. And I've got all my garlic over here. I started originally dropping them in to all the holes here through your chicken wire. Looks really cool and organized. Let me tell you, that's way too much work. So this is what I did with the rest of them. Stack them up, turn them every once in a while. But I got a good amount of garlic. I mean, you know, Not the biggest in the world, but they're decent. They'll clean up nice. First shot at garlic. Mainly the reason I wanted to do it was just for seed, so <laughs> it worked. Let me go around and show you some more stuff we've been working on. Here behind me, right there, is the biggest project we've been working on. This is going to have all the market gear in it. That way we can hook it up to the trailer and pull it, and it's not all sitting in there where we no longer have seats. So only two people could ride in the van now and it's always full of market gear so put it in here stays in here nice simple compact can move it around nice light trailer i uh redid all the sidewalls on it bottom the floor put a top on it it's still wet but it's pretty simple just go through i'm gonna have to put a uh some kind of opener on it i haven't gotten that far yet with it but just pick it up. Oh, too far. There we go. Just like that. I'm gonna put some pistons from here to here eventually, make that a little bit easier. And the back door here comes out. Then we can load all the tables and everything in. I'm gonna build some, uh, find some kind of rack, a little U on both sides so I can drop the market tents in. They'll be right up top here and just going down to here. That way they all stack nicely on top and I can put the tables and everything else in below. So let me go around and show you a couple of the other additions we have on the farm now. So earlier this year, we had a major predator problem. Had a fox come through and a coyote and then the raccoons have just been ridiculous this year i mean just non-stop they actually figured out how to open up the chicken door 
for the chicken coop and it's a slide door and I've never had him do that. So we got a bunch of replacements here. It's gonna be my new egg laying flock. We've got 11 or 12 there. They're just mixture of brown eggers because right now, well, at least two months ago, you couldn't choose what chickens you want. You just got chickens. So I managed to find chickens. And now these girls are all doing good. They're still a little skittish because this is the first day or two they've been down in grass. But we also have more animals out here to show you. Now here's our other new addition. We got uh, two mule foots. They're, I don't know, about 100 pounds each. But as you can see behind me, they are my new farm recyclers. So anything we crop out, any excess crops, anything that just went too far and we lost it, we now have somewhere to put it for food for them. And eventually they will become food for us. But right now I've just got them in this little small area. I'm going to open it up with the gate is over there and I'm going to let them free range all the way through this. Well, not free range, but be within a fence all the way through this whole entire area. So they'll be very, very happy here on the farm. Now with the rest of the farm, demand just hasn't quite been what it should be this year. We had it scaled up for a market and also not retail, but restaurant clients. Restaurants do not want to pay anything right now more than they can pay at Cisco. So it's a really bad deal for anybody that's actually growing right now because they will not pay anything. They don't want it. So we're kind of backed up in the field. And the biggest problem of all is, like behind me, the grass has taken over. It has been the worst year for grass that I've ever seen. These actually have landscape fabric underneath them and they are completely inundated with grass. We're having to plant in fabric and then go through and weed the grass out because it'll literally overtake the whole entire plot before the lettuce has time to establish. This is the only time I've ever seen anything like this happen. Three years now, even plots we've been working on for two years, nothing like this. It's always just fine. Over here's my other experiment, which it's also getting a little taken over by grass. But that's kind of what the plan was. We got here is corn patch, which it looks like I'm starting to get some corn. There we are. Trying to get some ears of corn going. But I also uh, three sistered this plot. So scattered throughout here, there are beans and pumpkins and squashes and just all kinds of stuff. I think I did some cantaloupe and I don't even remember what all. I just had a bunch of seeds and I went around and spaced them all about five foot apart in between all these rows and just went at it. Yeah, here's some going right here. We got more. I don't know. I figured I'd probably end up with a mess. Kind of looks like I've already started a mess. But if I can get anything out of it, then it's success because I already had all this stuff. It was all free. Had to spend a little bit on the fertilizer application, but you know, got to do it once, got to give it a shot. But that basically sums up the tour. Oh no, one more thing here before we go. I uh, cut down all the weed out here as a cover crop, and now I have all this stuff coming in. This is sun hemp. It's actually not doing bad. Once this stuff actually establishes, I just broadcast it out here. Didn't do a thing afterwards. Let it rain, I inoculated before. I don't know if that did any good because it's out here three or four days before it rained. But it looks like I got a really good cover of it. This stuff in a month will be up to here. In two months, it'll be like six foot tall. And then I gotta figure out how to mow it. But it's a good nitrogen fixer. So hopefully it does its job, suppresses the rest of the weeds. So, well, I hope you all like what you saw today. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank y'all. Have a good day.